Hi, I'm Amanda Ortella. I'm with the City of Santa Cruz Economic Development Department, and I'm here with Angela Farley, who is the founder and executive director of the Teen Kitchen Project. Hi. Hi. So tell us, what is the Teen Kitchen Project? So the Teen Kitchen Project is a nonprofit organization that invites young people into commercial kitchens in Santa Cruz County. We teach them how to cook organic nourishing food and the meals they prepare are delivered to people who are in crisis due to illness. About 85% of the people we serve have cancer um, and the rest are suffering from some other critical illness or maybe a recent surgery and they need help and don't have support at home. So we deliver those meals to them um, two days a week in Santa Cruz County. Wow, that's an amazing dual mission. Um, what was the inspiration for the Teen Kitchen Project? So I was inspired by a gift, actually. Um, my son had cancer when he was four, and during the time when we were going back and forth to UCSF, um, it was very challenging for our family to have any sense of normalcy, any sort of time together where we weren't focused on getting something done. And somebody gave me a year's worth of blue plate specials from Gales. And um, when I received that gift, something happened inside me where I realized, well, there's hundreds of other people that could use something so easy, which is prepared meals that just need to be reheated. And how can I find a way to get those people this same amazing gift? Um, and so I kind of made a deal with um, God or the devil. Like if we get out of this, I'm going to find a way to feed people because I faint at the sight of blood. And so I can't do anything nursing related, right. <laughs> even though I held it together when Charlie was sick. Um, that kind of helped me get through like the second half of his illness. And when we were released from the hospital, I started um, talking to friends and people who own kitchens and people who were chefs and people who were farmers and, and everybody who I approached with the idea to find a way to feed people said, yeah, let's do it. I'll give you food. I'll let you have my kitchen. I'll help develop recipes for you. So it was kind of at that point where I was just like, okay, I guess we're going to do this and we're going to feed people. It's and happening. Yeah. So Charlie was released from treatment Mother's Day um, wow. 2012. And we started cooking in September of 2012. Oh so goodness. it really was a fast startup. Yeah, it's amazing. And you've had such amazing growth. So you're in your five years now of the organization. What have been some of the big wins and how's the organization changed even just over those five years? So we started with one day of cooking and now we're cooking four days. We're cooking Sunday through Wednesday. And that's how many meals a week? Right now we're about 750. Wow. So that continues to grow. Um, right now we have two kitchens. We have one in Soquel and we um, have another in Watsonville. Mm -hmm. So we have two areas in the county who, where teens who want to serve can come and learn how to cook and meet people that they might not usually be connected with, like people older than them or kids from other schools um, or mentor chefs if they're interested in becoming a chef. Um, so adding a kitchen in Watsonville has been a really significant growth yeah. for us and that's been really exciting and that's a huge kitchen. That's the El Pajaro CDC um, incubator kitchen. Um, also um, expanding into a little bit more of job development for our young people. So we have a brunch cafe in Aptos mm -hmm. that we, um, the teens come in and they cook brunch and serve brunch and they get paid for it and they get tips. So that's kind of fun. And the brunch is amazing. I've had it. It's Thank fabulous. <laughs> So, and, and then um, how we work with clients and how we work with teens, we're constantly trying to improve and, and, and get really clear on utilizing best practices and, and being respectful and honoring their participation in our organization while at the same time um, providing a service that's really essential for both groups of people. So learning how to cook is kind of a lost art right now. Yeah. A lot of schools don't have culinary classes some do but a lot don't so kids learn how to cook they apply um, what they learn at home um, they gain confidence they meet new friends and then clients um, we're actually getting a lot more clear with studies that we've done on clients who have received our food as to the impact on their health um, so there's larger studies that show that actually feeding people helps keep them out of the hospital saves hospitals and insurance companies money wow. um, but from just a direct experience that our clients have they feel cared for they take their medicine they're more in compliance with whatever treatment plan their physician or healer has for them 
So we're really finding ways to connect with two different groups and, and they're really feeling um, that connection in different ways. So. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine for anyone that's been sick or have a loved one that's been sick, just the impact of having healthy food and just taking that off of your plate. And then on the other hand, with the teens, you know, really giving them a tangible way to feel connected to the community and like they can give back. I know stories that the teens, the teen chefs have shared. It's just this feeling of involvement that they get from participating in the organization and really what a beautiful thing it is for them to have that, you know, direct impact on another person's life in a positive way, which is really beautiful. So you're the founder and executive director, which means you wear a million hats and you have a family and children. And so how do you do it all? What does a day look like? What is the day in the life of Angela Farley like running a nonprofit? Well, this just in, I just <laughs> hired a director of operations. Woo! So, so that's going to free me up from the 60 hour, you know, endless work week. Um, so, you know, right now, it, it, it kind of detaches you from, so whenever I feel detached from the organization at that point, somebody will cancel and I'll have to go do a delivery or the, the kitchen will be short staffed and I'll have to go work with the teens or um, the pickup person from the farm won't be able to be there and so I'll have to go pick up the stuff at the farm. And every time something like that happens, I'm like, oh yeah, this is why I'm doing this. This is great. Like, you know, feeling that reward, that um, boost of that love hormone that you get from handing someone a bag of food or sharing a conversation with a young person or or meeting one of the farmers who's generously donating their food like that helps re-energize me um, and sharing now that we are growing it's great to have a person a director of operations who I can share this with and 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 open that that joy up to with somebody else you know so it's hard. It's really hard being a founder and executive director. And so we're working together as an organization to um, put into place the whatever needs to be in place so that I can still be the voice and the face of the organization, but that other people get to share in the day-to-day -day operations. And I think that's a really healthy place to be. And we're kind of at that normal five-year spot at a, at, as an organization, and we're growing in a really productive way, in a really healthy way, thanks to our board and the different people who support us in the community, like our donors and volunteers. And full disclosure, I am on the board, so. <laughs> <laughs> support Team Kitchen Project. <laughs> So what's next for Teen Kitchen Project? As you're looking out in the horizon, you know, where do you see things going? So we're trying to get into a position where if somebody's being discharged from the hospital, either Watsonville or Dominican, that a social worker can press a button and say, Johnny's leaving the hospital at 1 p.m. and by the time he gets home, he's got food. Wow. So we're trying to get more like connected and quick with our client response so that people don't have to get home alone where they can't walk to the store and they can't physically make food and we can offer that for them. So we're tightening that up a little bit by working closely with the hospitals and the social workers and we're, be, we're part of their, their um, discharge process now. They actually do have a form they can fill out and send to us. Um, also with young people, I've hired four teens for the summer full time to work in different capacities at our kitchen. So we're actually really expanding our, our job development base. And that's really exciting. Because if you hand the, the work to them, they can do it. Yeah. They're completely capable. And that's also exciting is you're, you're giving people their first jobs and they yeah. get to feel that paycheck and that tip and, mm -hmm. and, and do what they love, which is cooking and, and connecting with kids. Also, we're doing kids classes, some cooking classes um, in Soquel and Aptos and Watsonville, yeah. where we're teaching kids six and up how to cook. Um, and we're doing this, some are fee-based and some are because we have a grant. So that's also really exciting. Woo, we got a yeah. lot ahead of you. Yeah. So if people want to get involved or they want to donate, where can they learn more? So, teenkitchenproject.org has a lot of different ways that you can engage either as a donor or volunteer or if you want to learn more, if you want to have a tour, if you want to go on a, a delivery with me, I'd love to have you. So thank you. All right. Well, check them out. Thanks so much. Thank you. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, and you want to see more, why don't you subscribe to our channel? We would really appreciate it. And also, make sure you turn on your notifications because then if you do, you'll be the first one to actually see our video. And lastly, 
Again, if you like the video, why don't you like the video? Okay, thank you very much.